Have you ever experienced a place that makes you so uncomfortable that you avoid it at all costs, but at the same time it draws you to it? There's this forest in my hometown that my parents used to take me camping in as a kid. I loved camping for the most part. When we camped out by this little beach or over in Tennessee, it was fun. But as far as I can remember, any time we went to camp in this forest, it was dreadful. I remember as a kid being really scared and nervous when we were there and my parents tried to assure me that it was just because the trees were really tall. They weren't wrong about the trees though. I don't know what kind of trees they were, but they were extremely tall and thin, with even thinner branches that all curved straight up. Because the trees were so slim though, there were a lot more of them, and looking straight up seemed to be overwhelming. Again, as a kid, I just believed this because my parents were adults and smart, right? So that must have been the truth. I tried to reason with myself, but it would never go away. I always felt like they were watching me or targeting me, and if I wasn't looking at them, they would engulf me or something. I know I sound crazy or just very imaginative for a child, but I really felt like I was in danger. Anyways, I didn't have fun when we went here. I hardly slept, worried I would be taken. I was afraid to go swimming in the nearby stream or river or whatever it was. I would fish with my dad, that way I was near someone, in case I was drawn into the water or something, but I wouldn't do anything alone. Then, as I got older, I expected this irrational fear to fade, but it just got worse. I started getting physically ill or dizzy while I was there. I remember one time I helped my dad set up our tents and then went in and tried to sleep, but I kept feeling like I was being rocked, like what I would imagine it would feel like as an infant. To make things worse, it would fade about an hour after we left, so my parents would think I was faking it. It pretty much ruined camping for me because that was typically where we camped, so I would try to suggest another place or I would end up faking ill a day or two before just to try and get out of it. Sometimes it worked and I would be left at my grandparents, but not every time. Thankfully, I got older and was no longer required to go on these miserable attempts of a family time. My parents split up, they were never actually married, and I lived with my mom but was never required to go over to my dad's. So if he went camping and it was going to be there, I was typically busy that weekend. Many years later, I am an adult living on my own and just recently moved back in with my mom. I started getting into a few subreddits about paranormal and unexplained events and it made me think of this forest. I started talking to people about it and one of the most common questions I got was if I had gone back as an adult and at first I thought, hell no, but then again was trying to be reasonable and tell myself it had just been a fear. A lot of people wanted me to return with a camera and see if I could catch anything on it. I didn't have anything going on as I was in between jobs, which is why I was moving back home, so why not go and see if I really was a paranoid kid or if I was about to go viral. So I headed out with probably too many safety items, including a radio, my phone, a battery bank, a first aid kit, a pocket knife, and other things that I don't remember as well as my crappy old GoPro that I got cheap from a yard sale. I strapped it to my head so I could get everything that I was seeing too. The battery was supposed to last about eight hours and I wasn't planning on being there for more than an hour or so so I figured I would be set. I pulled into the parking lot and texted my mom and a friend to let them know where I was, in case I didn't come home, and headed in. As I got maybe a foot or two in, the sinking feeling immediately hit me. It felt like you just ran into someone that you didn't like for the first time in years and you knew it wasn't going to end well. I took a deep breath 
and continued in. I checked my phone and noticed it was around noon at the time. Then the feeling started to get worse. The air seemed thick and heavy, but it didn't feel like it was humid, beside the fact that the humidity had been low that day. Then the feeling of being watched came back. I looked all around and saw no one or nothing to be watching me. I even called out if someone was nearby and there was no answer. In fact, it was dead silent. There wasn't even crunching of leaves or sticks on the ground, the slight swaying of trees or even squirrels. Stupidly, I continued in, though, to find the area that we always camped at. I remembered and studied the path to make sure I knew how to get out in case anything happened to me or my parents, but when I got there, the only trace left was the rocky area leading down to the water where we fished. It seemed there were even new trees that were growing where we would set up our tents. As I started explaining this for the camera, I started getting disoriented and mentioned this. That's when the overwhelming sense of dread came. I still heard nothing and saw nothing other than trees, but it seemed to fall even more silent. I couldn't even hear the water rushing by. I didn't want to pass out in here, never knowing what could happen to me, so I started making my way out. As I started walking back, I looked at my phone and noticed it was about 1240. Knowing it only took me about 30 to 40 minutes to walk back there as I looked around, I expected to be back out around 130 at the most. Knowing I was walking faster, I expected to be out sooner. However, as I started walking back, I again started feeling like someone was watching or following me. When the feeling grew worse, I finally broke into a sprint to get out of there. After what felt like forever, I made it back to the entrance, ran past the older couple that was taking pictures, and hopped in my car, locking the door. As I sat there trying to compose myself, I noticed the sky was a pink and orange color and the sun was setting. I thought this wasn't possible since it was only around 2 when I pulled out my phone and noticed it was nearly 6. I had lost six hours, and that's when I noticed I had several missed calls and texts from both my mom and my friend. My friend knew how I felt about these woods, so they were trying to make sure I was alright. I know I didn't get the best reception there, but I had missed texts in between 1 to 6 since I had been out. I turned on my car, and the clock on it also confirmed it was around 6. I still have no explanation as to how I lost so much time. To add to my fears of this place, I went home, passed out, and checked the footage the next day. To my surprise, or rather confusion, the battery was dead and there was only about two or three hours of footage on it. It all started as I remembered, walking up to the camp area, talking to myself, I walked up to the water, and then as I was talking about where we camped, the video seemed to cut in and out, and then it was just horrible static with a bad grainy video of these trees. It was like that for most of the video, until it came back to me talking about leaving and running back. How could there be so much time of just the trees, but then cut right back to the video like no time was missed? It was like this footage was added to it. So I have the video showing I was there for like two to three hours, but according to my phone and my car, I was in there for nearly six. I showed my friend and they thought it was creepy as well, but now several years later, I can't find where I kept or saved the footage and the GoPro was stolen. So unfortunately, all I have are these unwanted memories of that place. I still don't know what to make of it. If anyone has any ideas, I'm willing to listen. I don't know if there is a spirit there or if it truly is the trees, but I think I got lucky on that last visit and therefore no matter what, I will never go back.